OK, all of these problems have little tricks in them. You have to read it very. You have to read. The problem very carefully. The average walking speed are of a person. Let me make this bigger. Nah, OK. Well, we'll do the best we can. The average walking speed are of a person. I, I experimented with this yesterday. I bet I could get it up to 200. Yeah, let's go for 200. The average walking speed R of a person living in a city of population P in thousands is modeled by this function. R of P equals 0 0.37 times the ln of P plus 0 0.05. Where R, the walking speed, is in feet per second. The population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. Actually, it's more if it's Kalamazoo, Michigan. But the population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. Find the average walking speed of people living in Kalamazoo. So you're finding the walking speed and there's a formula for the walking speed of that depends upon the number of people you live with who are packed together into that area. All right, well, the trick here that you have to pay real attention to is population P, I mean, that's pretty straightforward, but population P in thousands. Now they tell you that the population of Kalamazoo is 77,000. And that's the population, P-O-P, -P, is 77,000. But this P already takes the thousand into account. So P is 77 because P is in thousands already. So you have to be careful. Now we're going to use our formula. R, that is the walking speed when you've got population P, equals 0 0.37 times the LN of P, plus 0 0.05. We can do this. R of 77, that is the walking speed when P is 77, which means 77,000, equals 0 0.37 times the LN of 77 plus 0 0.5. Zero, five. Cool. We're going to put this in the calculator. Zero point thirty seven. I like to say times. So I don't know if I really need to. Ln seven seven close parentheses plus zero point zero. Five, enter. 
and I get R of 77 equals, let's see, I can't get the whole thing because it's scrolled, but I can do that. So I'm gonna do that. All right, now we have to look and see, okay, what do we round to? Round to the nearest tenth as needed. Tenth is one decimal place. Here's one decimal place. That's 1.6. The second decimal place is five, which will mean that five is able to round the six up to a seven. So our answer is going to be 1.7 feet per second. However, you just put 1.7 in the answer box and notice that feet per second is already written for you. So what you have to remember here is to carefully read every word. Don't speed read it. Yeah, I know P means population, but what about the population? That it's already counted in thousands, which again is going to mean that you have to adjust the population they give you for whatever city they decide to give you. And then you just throw it in the uh, formula and you get your answer and you round it to one decimal place, the tenths place. Okay. Any questions about this? Any discussion? Okay. Now this was the importance of logarithms when I was growing up. That is what we learned about in my science classes in elementary school. And that was that logarithms were used to measure the strength, the magnitude of earthquakes. And I was fascinated by that. Now they don't use the Richter scale anymore. They use a different scale, but it's still logarithmic, I believe. All right, the magnitude R, the bigness, measured on the Richter scale of an earthquake of intensity I is defined as R equals log, log base 10, log I over what's called I naught, I sub zero, where I naught is a minimum intensity used for comparison. You see this a lot in the sciences. If the intensity of an earthquake is 10 to the 7.04 power times I naught, which means it's 10 to the 7.04 um, times stronger than this smallest earthquake. What was the magnitude R on the Richter scale? That's a lot of words. 
We're looking for the magnitude R. As always. There. We're looking for the magnitude R. OK, that's magnitude. Think of that as bigness. It's a number assigned magnitude. Assigned to show the destructive power of the earthquake. The amount of shaking. OK, and what that equals is log. Of the ratio of the intensity. To a minimum intensity. And I suppose if you're a geologist, you know what number that is. OK, so. Here we're told that the intensity I of an earthquake is this. So I'm going to use substitution. R equals log ten raised to the seven point zero four times I naught over I, whoops, let me do this. I naught. Well, you can see right away conveniently the I naughts cancel and you're left with log. Let's say base 10. It is base 10 of 10 to the 7.04 power, and you're about to discover something, if I can write my seven correctly. You're about to discover a cool property of logarithms, an incredibly cool property of logarithms. But first, let's put it in the calculator. log of 10 carat 7.04 now if you've got this kind of calculator or operating system you're going to have to hit the right arrow key to come down and then put your paren you have to do the same thing in my math lab i think OK, um, anyway, we're going to calculate this. The log of 10 to the 7.04 power is. Tomorrow we deal with this more in depth, but right now, tomorrow, Wednesday, but right now, it's enough to tell you this. There's a cool property of logarithms that says when the base matches the argument, the answer is the exponent. So for instance, log base three of three, to the seventh power is seven. Because this number matches that number. They're both bases and the bases are exactly the same. Log base two. Of two to the fifth power is five. How about this, log base seven of seven equals one. Why? Because 
7 is raised to the 1 power, the invisible 1 power. And log base E of E to the 5th power is 5. What does that mean? Really, that means the ln of E to the 5th power is 5. This is something you want to memorize because it will really cut short the calculations you're going to have to make in the very near future. As in next week. OK, now this was really a very basic problem where you're at right now. All you would have to do is throw that into the calculator like I did. So let me take a picture of it. And if all else fails, you can usually do that. All right, discussion about this. Okay. All right, now you're gonna learn a whole bunch of new stuff. If you're a nursing major, you're gonna see this again even though you might not want to. Of course you don't want to. But you're still gonna have to deal with measuring the pH of patient's blood if you're a nurse. Okay, the pH, the acid-base balance, the pH of fruit juice is 4.2. Find the hydronium ion concentration. Ew! Look at that ugly thing. The hydronium ion concentration of the juice and use this formula. The pH equals the negative logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. And then if that's not bad enough, you're gonna give your answer in scientific notation. And they talk about moles per liter. That's why you've gotta take chemistry so you know what moles are. I used to know, I don't need more, but I do remember studying them. They're not the moles that live in the ground, I promise. Something about 10 to the 24 or something like that. All right, well, we're going to be solving for H sub 3, 0 plus. Three parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, and it's lost an electron. So now it has a positive charge. I remember that much. Okay. Well, we're going to be solving for that. I propose to make this problem easier right now. Let X equal the hydronium ion concentration so that we can rewrite this. What do you say? pH, oh, it's a little p and a big H. pH equals negative log x. 
that looks so much better. And we're going to solve for X. Okay, so 4.2. The pH is 4.2. 4.2 equals negative log, that's negative one times log X. Quiet, you've been good so far. Doggone it. I forgot to put it on uh, airplane mode. There, okay. Um, all right, now to solve for log X, I've got to solve for log X before I can solve for X. That makes sense. So I'll divide out negative one by dividing both sides by it. Okay, now that's going to give me negative 4.2 equals the log of X which is really log base 10. Well now, this is a logarithmic equation, which means this is the exponent, this is the base, this is the argument, which also is the other. So the way to solve for X is to translate this into the other number equals the base raised to the exponent. So we're going to have 10 raised to the negative 4.2 equals X. And now, life would be easy enough if all I had to do was take 10 and raise it to the negative 4.2 power. I haven't forgotten about the scientific notation, just wait. 10 raised to the negative 4.2 power is this ugly number right here. And it's already in scientific notation. Yes, it is. Just checking the answer. Let's look at this really closely. Oh, that's pretty clear. Equals X. That 10 to the negative 4.2 is 6.30957344 E to the negative five. Piece of cake, okay. Here's what this means. The letter E right here means exponent. What this is telling you is that negative five is an exponent, but on what? 10. Scientific notation is always in times 10. So now let's go back up and read the answer and read the instructions. This is the answer in scientific notation. Negative five is the exponent. 
What we care about is how many decimal places do we round to? And this would seem to say round, ah, round to the nearest tenth. That is one decimal place. Okay, so let's go back down here. We're going to round this part right here to one decimal place. The second decimal place is a zero, so this is not able, that's a slash, this is not able, the zero is not able to round the three up to a four. So our answer is going to be 6.3, if it were in the calculator, E negative five, but what E trans E negative five translates to is times 10 to the negative five. That's what E negative five means, times 10 to the negative five. So X is about 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Now the instructions say to write it in <clears throat> in scientific notation, but if this were not scientific notation, I'm going to show you what 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5 is. This is code. What this is code for is 6.3 with the decimal point moved 5 units to the left. The negative sign means go left. So one, two, three, four, five. Put a decimal point there and put a zero in each one of those little valleys. So what X equals in decimals is point zero, 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 zero six three and i completely forget what x was oh that's the hydronium ion concentration in moles per something moles per liter moles per liter yes anyone knows that However, written in scientific notation, this in your calculator becomes this. And rounding to one decimal place means come over here to the decimal part and round to one decimal place. So let's put your answer in the answer box. And we're done. OK, this was your introduction to logarithms. There's a lot more coming. In the next two weeks. What you need to do, the primary thing you need to do is the homework. And if it says past due, ignore that. If you have a zero on it, ignore that. You can always redo it and get points. I don't take points off. You know that by now. You've got to know that. Um, and then since April 30th is a very important day, April 30th, is the very last day to make up any work.
I should say any old work. The only work you're going to be able to do after April 30th is the practice final exam and the final exam. Everything else will be closed. Okay, that's important enough for me to write it on your homework. Remember that, okay? This has to be a priority. Has to be. Okay. I know your mouths are probably hanging open about this. So go meditate on it. But this little trick of letting the uh, hydronium ion concentration in moles per liter equal X just makes everything easier. Okay. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Feel free to contact me. Um, I am in 15 minutes going over to my office hours in the helpline, the help area thing. So maybe I'll see you there. But until then, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.